not as though the word of God has failed. Niisip po kasi ng mga tao na dahil na ang mga isa na isa are under a state of unbelief. Na as a nation, hindi ko nila kinikilala si Jesus bilang kanilang Messiah na bilang uh, tagapagliktas ng kanilang mga buhay ay ang Panginoon Diyos ang kanyang salita has failed. Uh, we know that the Israelites uh, the Israelites are a chosen nation in fact until now we do not of course uh, delete the fact na sila ho ay chosen nation ng Panginoon ngunit niliwanag naman po ni Pablo na it is not the race but it is the grace ng Panginoon Diyos the grace of God to save and not all Jews are Jews indeed hindi sabihin po hindi lahat ng mga ang galing kay Abraham ay tunay ng mga anak ni Abraham kinakailangan po ay yung kanilang mga buhay must be submitted to Christ and their faith must come from God and the object of faith must also be Jesus Christ bilang Panginoon at Tagapaligtas ng kanilang mga buhay kaya ho ginamit natin yan o ginamit ni Pablo rather yung halimbawa po ni Isaac na siyang son of promise samantalang si Ishmael naman though he also came from Abraham but he did not come from the womb of Sarah he was not the son of promise so Hagar yung kanyang concubine was the mother of Ishmael but Ishmael eventually was uh, rejected by the Lord because Isaac was the son of promise. It was through the power of God that Isaac was birthed by, by Sarah. And so we see here that salvation is not by the will of man, nor by the efforts of human beings, but by the power of God. Yung po ang nagre-represent sa kaparanakam po ni Isaac. And also we saw the uh, another illustration of God's sovereign choice or election in the illustration of the twins. At sino ho yung mga twins na yun? Na siyang binanggit ho ni, ni Paul dito. Yun ho ay si Jacob at si Esau. Sabi ho sa verse 11, though they were not yet born and had done nothing, either good or bad, in order that God's purpose of election might continue not because of works but because of him who calls she was told the older will serve the younger as it is written so in verse 13 Jacob I love but Esau I hated so napakaliwanag ho dito na ang pagtili sa kanila una-una ay walang kinalaman sa kanilang mga ginawa ito man ay mabuti o masama. Ito man ay maganda o pangit. Nang sa gayon po, sabi niyan, yung purpose ng election ng Diyos ay magpatuloy. Hindi dahil sa kanilang gawa o mga gawa, kundi dahil sa kanyang tumawag sa kanila. Kaya ang nangyari ko dyan, uh, imbis na yung mas matanda na si Iso will receive the, the foremost blessing ng Panginoon Diyos siya ho ay binaypas so, he was passed over at ang binigyan ho ng pabor at ng pagtili ay walang iba kundi yung mas nakababata na si Jacob kaya ho, of course God has also blessed Esau uh, with temporal things with uh, material blessings and we see that when you look at Yung mga Arab nations, they are blessed, di ba? Mayayaman ho ang mga Arab nations. Pero, yung pong pagpili ng Diyos ay nasa mga, of course, we're not talking about the whole nation of Israel, kung hindi yung mga tinawag niya were handpicked from the nation of Israel. Kung ulitin natin, it is not by race, 
It is by grace ang kaligtasan mo. So, alam mo ni Pablo na marami pang mga questions in the mind ng kanyang mga readers. Kaya mo, hindi mo siya haphazardly na would just uh, put to an end yung pong kanyang pagkakaliwanag. He would belabor his point further nang sa gayon ay kanya ho ma-address yung mga alam niya o yung mga ina-anticipate niya na mga katanungan pa o mga bagay na gumugulo sa isip ng kanyang mga readers. And I'm sure na we can also identify with the readers of Paul dahil alam ko ho na nung ito yung aking itinuro nung nakaraang linggo, uh, many if not uh, all of us ay hindi pa masyadong parang uh, joyfully accepting or readily accepting and understanding yung mga bagay na ito. Well, I understand that, uh, that thing, brethren, because even in my journey as a Christian, it really took me years para talaga akong maunawaan ang mga bagay na ito. And of course, I'm not claiming that I know all the mysteries of salvation. Sabi nga ako ng isang theologian na every theologian and every Bible student must have a mystery point sa kanyang pagtuturo o sa kanyang pag-aaral ng Santa ng Diyos. No one can claim that he understands perfectly all the mysteries that are in the mind of God or in the plan ng Panginoon Diyos. But I pray na itong mga sinasabi ng ni Apostle Paul would really uh, gain grounds sa ating pong understanding dahil napakahalag ako na maintindihan that the most important thing for a Christian is what he thinks about God. Sa Tagalog ang pinakamahalaga sa isang Kristiyano ay kung ano ang kanyang iniisip tungkol sa Diyos. Because that would determine whether you would glorify God or you would blaspheme the name of God. And this is the reason why people, a lot of people blaspheme the name of God. Because hindi mo nila mali ang kanilang konsepto tungkol sa Diyos. Kaya nga, nung sinimulan mo natin yung Romans chapter 1, nakita mo natin na ang tingin ng mga tao sa Diyos ay pwede nilang i-manipulate ang Diyos, na pwede mas mataas ang creature rather than the Creator, and that they, they can serve the creation together with the Creator. At para sa kanila, walang issue about that. Pero sinasabi ng Bible na you cannot worship these two at the same time. Either you are worshiping an idol or you are only worshiping the one and only true God. Kaya ho, it is very imperative, brethren, na ang bawat Kristiyano ho, meron siyang tamang understanding kung sino ang Diyos sa kanyang buhay. Meron siyang tamang understanding tungkol sa Diyos, then he will be able to worship God in spirit and in truth. Pag hindi naman po, he would be an idolater. He would worship the wrong God, a God of His own making. Kaya mahalaga po itong ating pagtatalakay dito. So we now go to our topic on hand. And we will be studying verses 14 hanggang 18. Ito ho ay aking binigyan ng pamagat na in choosing some is God unfair. So let's begin our reading simula sa verse 14. What shall we say then? Is there injustice on God's part? By no means. For He says to Moses, I will have mercy on whom I have mercy and I will have compassion on whom I had compassion. So then, it depends not on human will or exertion, but on God who has mercy. For the scripture says to Pharaoh, for this very purpose, I have raised you up that I might show my power in you, 
and that my name might be proclaimed in all the earth. So then he has mercy on whomever he wills, and he hardens whomever he wills. Ayaw yung manalangin. Bilang inyong iglesia, kami ni Panginoon ay muling nagpapakumbaba at kulong-kulong ng pagpapasalamat sa inyong dakila at mayaman na pag-ibig, awa at biyaya sa buhay ng bawat isa. Kami, Panginoon, ay nagpapasalamat na sa araw na ito kami ay muling nung ginising Binigyan, Panginoon, ng sapat na kalakasan upang kami ay makarating at maka, makadalo ng Diyos sa gawain na ito. Nihiling din namin na kami rin nagbigyan po ninyo ng patalasan ng isip, patuloy na kalakasan ng katawan at puso na handa na hindi lamang makinig kung hindi may isa puso at masunod ang inyong mga salita. Narangin namin na ang pakangaral ng salita ninyo ay mas lalong magpatibay sa amin ng pananampalataya ay Kristo. At sa mga hindi pa nakakikilala sa inyo at sa inyong anak, bilang kalapagligtas, sinihiling namin na wa, Panginoon, kayo ay maawa, kayo ay gumalaw, at sa gayon ang kanilang mga isip at puso ay mabuksan, mabasag ang mga maling pangunawa upon sa Diyos, at sila ay tunay na makaunawa ng inyong kaligtasan, ang paraan ng inyong kaligtasan. At bago lumabas sa lugar na ito ay makakilala kay Christ Jesus. Panginoon, ang lahat ng ito na is po namin mangyari dahil mitiin po namin na magbigyan kayo ng makulit pagsambang sa inyo lamang para dapat magbalik at sa inyong anak na si Christ Jesus sa kanyang pangalan, ito ang aming samot na langin. Amen. 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 So, gaya ko nang sabi ko kanina sa ating uh, panimulang uh, uh, pananalita, na si Apostol Pablo ay ayaw mo niya na basta-basta na lang na bilisan yung kanyang pagkatalakay regarding God's sovereign choice. Ano? Ito ay isang topic na nabanggit ko last Sunday na isa sa mga napakahirap na verse sa Bible hindi dahil sa napakahirap na intindihin kundi napakahirap na tanggapin. You know, there are some things in life uh, para kung mga malalaking mga fears ng gamot na mahirap lulupin. At ito ay parang ganito rin. Parang ang mga tinuturo ko rito ni Pablo mula Romans 9, 10 hanggang 11, 11 chapter, ay parang mga napakalalaking mga mga capsules ng gamot na pagka inyo mong tinig ay napakahirap at lulupin. Even if gagamitan mo ng panulak na tubig. And yet, alam natin na yung mga medicine na yun, kahit mga napakalakit, mahirap lulupin, kinakailangan mo ah, uh, tawag dito, inumin para ikaw ay dumaling. Kung kinakailangan mong hatiin sa dalawa, gagawin mo yun. I remember nang ako ay napapagaling from my uh, surgery, ay kinakailangan kong uminok ng, ng gamot na talagang yun mo yung pinakamalaking uh, tableta na, na aking na take sa, sa buong buhay ko. At dahil sa Nahirapan ako kong lumunok during that time uh, dahil sariwa pa ko yung sugat ay kinakailangan kong uh, medyo dudurugin. Hindi mo dudurugin kundi kahit yung tiin ng aking misis para ito ay aking uh, manunok. At may mga times sa parang ayaw kong mag-take kaya lang my mind tells me na kinakailangan mo yung i-take para ikaw ay uh, gagaling. Yun din po yung isang bagay na mahalagang maunawa natin whenever we read the Bible. There is a bad habit among many Christians na iniiwasan po nila yung mga, yung mga hard doctrines which they think are really 
impossible to understand. Yeah, of course, sometimes in this na uh, well, uh, mahina ang aking IQ or average lang ang aking IQ o hindi ako sanay uh, magbasa ng mga tinutunan sa Bible. So sometimes they, they underestimate probably yung kanilang kakayanan or minsan they also underestimate the power of the Holy Spirit na magtuturo sa kanila. Remember the one of the main uh, ministries of the Holy Spirit ay ituro sa atin ang katukunganan. At wala ho yung, ano, no? wala ho yung uh, limitations. Whether yan ay parang napakasimpleng turo like um, Matthew 6.33 o yung turo ko na sinasabi dito sa Romans chapter 9. Wala ho problema rin ang Holy Spirit. Minsan na may problema ay yung ating willingness to really patiently go through these passages whether as a church or as individuals because sa totoo lang ho, maraming Christian they're just you know, pure and simple lazy in studying God's word especially doctrines and that's why in our pulpit series isa mo yan sa mga bagay na itinuturo mo natin dahil kung halimbawa ako ay isang tamad na tagapagturo, iiwasan ko ho yung romance. Itagalan ko tayo sa mga madadaling mga mga libro ng Biblia. Pero ito ay, this is the the best presentation and the most uh, expository presentation and comprehensive presentation of the gospel. And so, I hope that you will just uh, follow me through this journey in the book of Romans. Now, sinasagot ko rito ngayon ni Pablo, when you look at verse 14 in your Bible, sabi yan, what shall we say then? Now, ang una ko rito gusto uh, i-present ni Paul as we look into the next slide ay yung accusations. So, this is ano nga, no? parang si ano nga, no? si Paul was like trying to play as a counsel for God. So, this is in defense of God. So, alam natin na hindi naman kailangan ng Diyos sa tulo, kaya lang gagamitin mo niya si Paul para depensahan yung kanyang sovereign choice. So, ano ho ang accusation? And this is, by the way, a universal accusation. Ito nga ay hindi lamang nanggagaling sa uh, iilang mga tao. But I believe that majority, if not all people, would, you know, would dare accuse God of not playing it fair and square. Accuse ng tao ng sanibutan na ang Diyos ay hindi patas dahil meron siyang kinikilingan. So, sa, sa ating hong human thinking, pag sinabi mong meron kang kinikilingan, ang dating ho nun ay hindi ka patas. Di ba? Pag ikaw ay meron mga biases, ang tingin sa'yo ay you're not playing it fair. Meron kang ano, meron kang kinikilingan kasi. Pero pwede ko ba natin ma-apply sa Diyos na kapag ka siya ay may kinikilingan siya ho ay he's not playing it fair. Does that make God unrighteous? Does, does that make His justice suddenly turns into injustice? Kaya ho, ang accusation dyan na siyang mistake dito ni Paul, what shall we say then? Is there injustice on God's part? At mabilis naman na sinagot ni Paul in the very same verse sabi niya, by no means. Alam niyo, in the Greek, that is a very strong negative. Maganda ho yung translation dyan ng King James. Sabi mo niya, God forbid. God forbid. Hindi pwede na magkaroon ng injustice ang Diyos. There might be injustices in human courts, pero when it comes to the court of God, there will never be even a hint of injustice. 
there was never a time that God was unjust. Sabi ho ng Bible, His ways are perfect. His ways are perfect. Kaya ho, we can see here in the next slide, because He is God, He cannot be unrighteous or unfair. The fairness of what we human beings do may be open to question, but the fairness of what God does is unquestionable. It must be just and right. He himself said it to Abraham many years earlier, shall not the judge of all the earth do right. Ito ho yung time na sinasabi ng Diyos kay Abraham yung kanyang plano that he will destroy Sodom and Gomorrah. And Abraham was you know, pleading before God not to do it. And he was saying that, uh, Lord, if there are this many righteous on uh, on those uh, cities, will you destroy? So hanggang sa sinabi lang Diyos na walang ganyan number, walang ganyan number, hanggang sa kakaunti na lang yung number. And so, God detected that in the mind of Abraham, Abraham, iniisip niya, well, God might not be just at all. So answering yung nasa mind ni Abraham, ang sabi ng Diyos, shall not the judge of all the earth do right. And what is right for God? What is fair for God? What is fair for God is what we saw in the opening statement of Paul in Romans 1.18. For the wrath of God has been revealed because of all unrighteousness and ungodliness among men. So God is just. He is not, He did not destroy the world in the time of Noah dahil masama sila. Hindi lang yun eh. Sila sa akin ng Bible, sukdulan ang kanilang kasamaan. Hindi lang sa panlabas. Every inclination and every intention of the hearts ng tao ay makakasama. So was God just in destroying the whole world ng panahon ng Noah? The answer is yes. Was God just in destroying Sodom and Gomorrah? The answer is also yes sa katindihan ng kanilang kasamaan. And no one can actually make an accusing or point an accusing finger sa Diyos at sabihin na eh, biglaan naman na pinatay ng Diyos sa mga tao. Hindi yung biglaan. Alam natin na no one was given a hundred years to preach. One century para bigyan ng warning yung mga tao. Bigyan ng pakakataon na sila ay maniwala at magsisi at pumasok doon sa ato. And even yung mga taga-sadom and gumoral were given many, many decades na sila yung magsisi. If you can use the word God overlooked their sins. Na siyang ginamit din ito sa mga taga-atens. Sinasabi niyo na in the past, God overlooked our sins but now, He is calling everyone for what? To repent. Sabi niya sa Acts chapter 17. So when, you, when Paul said God overlooked, hindi ibig sabihin na kanya hong uh, uh, sa Tagalog ay kanyang uh, kinamtihan or kinondong sa English ng kasalanan. Kung hindi, ibig sabihin, biligyan sila ng pagkakataon. 2 Peter 3.9 God is patient, not wanting everyone to perish but to be saved. So, God is not unjust in terms of giving people the opportunity na sila ay magsisi sa kanilang kasalanan. But God can only be patient, brethren. May hangganan. There is what? A time for reckoning. A time for accounting and a time of judgment. Because hindi mo ang tao ang magkakalindaryo kung kailan niya gusto magsisi ng kanyang kasalanan. 
Araw-araw may panawagan ng Diyos sa tao na siya ay magsisi, na siya ay manumbali. Dahil hindi mo natin alam. Kaya kanina nga ako sa aking prayer, sabi ko, salamat Diyos sa kanil ginising ninyo. Maraming tao ho, hindi na nagigising kung sila natulog. Di ba? Bata pa sila, malakas pa sila, para wala silang sakit. Hindi nang sila nagising. So, hindi ho ang tao na didikta na well, saka na lang ako magsisisi bago ako mamatay. So, parang sinabi mo na ako na didikta kung hanggang kailan ako magubuhay. Hindi ba? Kaya ho, sabi sa next slide, again, reaffirming yung kung uh, righteousness ng Panginoon Diyos, sabi ni Moses sa uh, Deuteronomy 32 verse 4, He is the rock, His work is perfect, for all His ways are justice. A God of truth and without injustice, righteous and upright is He. So, yun ho ang gustong i-diin ni, ni Paul sa kanyang mga tagapagbasa. There is no unrighteousness in God whatsoever. So any any person who accuses him, he does not know what he's saying. Hindi niya kinala ang Diyos. Because God's ways are always perfect and righteous. In the next slide, now Paul does not just say it and drop it na parang ganun-ganun na lang. He would not just talk about God being just and righteous, tapos iiwanan na lang niya yun. Magbibigay mo siya sa atin dito para ipatunayan o bigyan ng ebidensya yung kanya kong sinasabi dito in defense of God. Sa mga magitan mo ng dalawang biblical examples. So we will be looking at this two biblical examples uh, beginning with Romans 9, 15, and 16. Ito ho yung kanyang unang sagot dito. Example kay Moses. Ano ang sabi niya rito? Uh, when you look at verse 15, For he says to Moses, I will have mercy on whomever I will have mercy and I will have compassion on whomever I will have compassion. So ito ho ay kanyang sinabi kay Moses in reply to Moses' plea na wag sirain o wag patayin ang Diyos ang bayan na kanyang iniligtas mula sa Egypt. Now, why did they incur the wrath of God? Well, because they replaced God with an idol. Remember, na ang Diyos so ay iisang Diyos. Pero yun nga, oh, they substitute God for a cheap idol that could not even lead them one step away from where they are. Akala ko nila yung mag-lead sa kanila sa promise line. Pero the Bible says that idols have feet but they cannot walk. They have eyes, they cannot see, they have ears, they cannot hear. They have hands, they cannot touch. And all those who make them will become like them. The impotence ng idols. Useless, in other words. Kaya ho, in the next slide, nung sinabi ng Diyos na I will have compassion, the word compassion sa verse 15 means God's tender feelings towards those who are suffering. It means for God to have pity on them. Sabi naman ni Steve Lawson in the next slide, kanya na inaborate further, sabi niya, mercy refers primarily to God's intervening action for God to step in and to relieve the misery of the one who is suffering. So mercy focuses upon God's action, compassion focuses upon the attitude behind the action. So, it is God's compassion that is driving His mercy. It is the attitude 
of compassion, the deep feelings of God towards those whom He chooses to save, He acts with mercy. So it begins with mercy. And it is expressed. Okay. Ah, sorry. It begins with compassion. And then the outward expression is mercy. God not doing or not giving to us what we deserve. Okay. Kaya ho, nung binanggit niya sa Romans 9.15, Yung, I will have mercy on whomever I will have mercy and I will have compassion on whomever I will have compa- compassion yan po ay kinote from uh, in the next slide kinote po yan galing sa Exodus 33 verse 19 at nung binanggit po yan ng Diyos kay Moses wala po kinalaman dyan ang patungkol sa anumang justisya ang binibigyan po dyan ng emphasis ng Diyos kay Moses ay yung kanyang awa, mercy. Yung kanyang awa po, yan ang susip para maunawaan po natin ang doctrine of election. So let that ring in your mind over and over and over again. The key to understanding the doctrine of election is the word mercy. We are not looking for fairness, but we are looking for mercy. In the next slide, we can see here the relationship of God's justice and mercy. So, ano ho yung justice ng Panginoon Diyos? Yung kanyang justice ay parusahan ng mga Israelites dahil sa kanilang paggawa ng mga Diyos, Diyosan and to create another nation to be his own. Magagawa ng Diyos siya. Kaya niyang kumuha, umamili uli ng ibang bansa. Pagkatapos niyang ubasakin ang bayan ng Israel. So, yung awa ho ng Diyos, sabi kasi ng mga iba, na mali yung kanilang understanding ng interpretation, kaya daw naawa ang Diyos sa mga ibang Israelites ay dahil kay Moses. Mali yun. Kaya mas sinabi niya kay Moses, I will have mercy. I. He was not, brethren, showing mercy because he was influenced by the cry and by the request of, of Moses. I will have mercy in whom I will have mercy and will have compassion in whom I will have compassion. So we can see here na basically He is a merciful God. Wala akong nagtuturo sa Diyos to be merciful. Tayo, kinakailangan mo natin patutunan, di ba? We need to learn and relearn how to be merciful. But as far as God is concerned, brother, that is His very character, mercy. And when His justice prompts Him to punish sinners, yung Kanyang mercy ho, somehow, restrains him. Pinipigilan mo siya para ipatupan mo yung kanyang pagkaparusa sa mga taong karapat dapat namang parusahan. And how can he possibly be accused of being unfair if he does not extend that mercy to everyone? Why? Because nobody deserves it. If everybody deserves it and God only shows sovereign election and choice to some or to few to a few people, then we can definitely accuse him of being unfair. Pero lahat po eh, ang lahat, what do you deserve? What do I deserve? We all deserve the justice of God. We all deserve the wrath of God. Because we are all sin. If you are Brethren, asking God or demanding from God fairness, ito ang bibigay ng Diyos sa'yo. Romans 1.18 Anong ibibigay ng Diyos sa'yo? Romans 6.23 For the way just of sin is death. Yan ang ibibigay mo sa atin ng Panginoon Diyos. Pero bakit mo tayo niligtas ng Diyos? Dahil sa Kanyang awa. 
Bakit niya pinili na merong iligtas dahil sa kanyang awa? Does that make him a God of injustice or a God of unrighteousness? Hindi mo. Because no one deserves mercy and no one deserves to be saved from hell. Wala ko eh. Kaya sabi nga ng Romans 9.16, next slide. So then, it is not of him who wills, nor of him who runs, but of God who shows mercy. So God's mercy is not the result of any human desire or any human effort. It finds its source purely in His character, which is mercy. Going back to the example of Jacob. Kung hindi nyo parang pag-aralan po yung buhay ni Jacob, maaaring isipin ninyo, or you might conclude na, kaya siguro pinili ng Diyos si Jacob over Esau, siguro mas good boy siya kaysa kay Esau. No! Not that Esau was not sinful, pero when you try to compare yung kanilang buhay, ano ha, sa salitang kanto, si Raulo, si, ano, si Jacob, Luko-luko ho siya. Magaling ho siya magpaikot ng tao. Kaya nga ho, doon pa lang sa loob ng sinabubunan, ginagawa niya na ho yun eh. Hinihila na ho niya yung paa ng kanyang kapatid. Luko-luko na ho siya. Nandun pa sa sinabubunan ng kanyang nanay. And throughout his life, brethren, until that turning point doon sa Valley of Jabok, He was a supplanter, he was a deceiver, he was deliberately taking advantage and manipulating people. Ganun po siya. So we cannot, brethren, say na he was picked by God over Esau because he was the better man? No way. If God was choosing out of marriage, ang pipiliin mo niya, I believe si Isang. Di ba? Si Isang ka lang pipiliin. Dahil less even eh. Pero si Jacob ang kanyang pinili. And this is a message that must be clear to everyone. That it is not in the good works or the bad works. It is not what you have done in the past or in the present and what you will do by tomorrow. It is not of him who wills, sabi ng Romans 9.16, nor of him who runs, but of God who shows mercy. So this is not a case of first come, first serve basis. Hindi ko ito yung sasabihin na, ah, okay, there's an offer of salvation. The first 100,000 people who avails of this will be saved. Hindi ko ito paunahan. Wala rin kinalaman dito yung dahil ikaw ay lumaki sa seminaryo, lumaki ka sa church, lumaki ka sa Christian family, wala kong ganun. It is what of God who shows mercy. Pero, Pastor, dinisar ko na makilaan ang Diyos. The very desire that you had in your heart on the day that you were converted, Who was the author of that? Who is the source of that? He is the author and perfector of our faith. Hebrews 12. Who opened your eyes in the first place? Who opened your ears to hear the, the calling of God? Siya ko nagbukas niya. Whatever God has shut down, no man can open. And whatever God has opened, no man can shut. Who opened the heart of Lydia in the book of, Philip, in the book of Acts, chapter 16? Sabi ng Bible, God opened the heart of Lydia. Yung kanyang pag-open ng kanyang puso, hindi galing sa kanyang human will. Sabi nga ng isang theologian, every person has a will to go to heaven, but has no will to go, I'm sorry, every, every non-Christian has a will to go to hell, but no will to go to hell. And that's very true. 
Because man is spiritually dead. And unless the Holy Spirit regenerates, brethren, our mind and thinking will remain spiritually blind and spiritually dead. We will remain rejecting God and just loving ourselves and not understanding, brethren, the mercy that is contained in the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. So, ano hong makikita ko natin dito sa verse 16? Sinasabi ko yan, as far as salvation is concerned, God is sovereign. Siya ang mamimili. Wala hong consultation ang mangyayari ko dito between Him or even the angels or even His people. Who has become His counselor? Sabi ng Bible. Wala ko. He is the wonderful counselor. God has total freedom na magpakita ng kanyang awa on whomever He desires to show mercy. It does not depend on alakasan sa kanya. It does not depend on man forcing Him, exerting His own efforts para matuwa ang Diyos sa kanya. Hindi ho. This is the grand principle of salvation. God has sovereign freedom to choose kung sino ang kanyang gusto iligitas. You know, again, that's a hard pill to swallow. Yun po ang totoo. Isa, basahin niyo po yung libro ni John MacArthur, The Hard Truth. Ephesians 1.11 says, All things work according to the counsel of God's will. Sa madaling salita ho, para sa mga pinili, for those who are saved, none of us can ever look at ourselves and say, well, ako'y pinaburan ng Diyos, ako'y niligtas ng Diyos, ako'y kinawaan ng Diyos because of me. Hindi <laughs> ho. Actually, in spite of you, in spite of me, ako ay kinaawaan ng Diyos. So when you go, when I go to heaven one day, brethren, at maglagay ng mga crown ang Diyos sa atin, it will, it will only probably take a millisecond before you remove it from your head and you lay it down at the feet of Christ because all glory and honor and praise unto Him. Salvation, brethren, is for the glory of God. Kaya kung we sing songs like, How great thou art, we sing songs like, To God be the glory. Do you know what? Wala kong tayo dyan eh. So Diyos lang po ang lahat. God had mercy on us because He chose in His sovereignty to have mercy on us. Kaya ho, uulitin natin, sinasabi ho rin, it does not depend on the man who wills. Next slide. It does not depend upon the man who wills because no man wills to believe in Jesus Christ. If you are spiritually dead, there is no free will. Hindi malaya sa Tagalog ang iyong pagtili sa Diyos. Ulitin ko, maliban na buksan ng Diyos ang iyong mata, ang iyong tainga, ang iyong puso, mananatili ano ho, salado lahat ng mga yan. Kaya nga, when you're sharing the gospel, you know what I mean? Yung mga tao na nagre-reject sa gospel, di ba? Sarado ho yung kanilang hindi sila receptive. Parang meron hong velo. <laughs> There's a veil over their heads. They cannot see the glory of the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. And it would really take, brethren, the hand of God para talagang tanggalin ho yung veil na yun over their eyes para makita nyo nila na sila yung makasalan at makita nila that the only hope for their redemption is the sacrificial work of Jesus Christ sa kanilang buhay so that's the first illustration kaya makikita natin dyan na sinasabi ng Diyos kay Moses kung sino man ang ating ililigtas from among the Israelites, kaya we can see na may mga pinatay ang Diyos 
new man. You know, even God gave them a chance. Sabi ng Diyos, sabi mo sa kanila, those who are on the side of the Lord, pumunta sa iyo. And not everyone, in fact, grab that opportunity para sila ay maligtas. Yung mga ibao, hindi pa rin sa mga kay Moses. So, ano nangyari sa kanila? Yung mga rebels, bumuka ang lupa, pinahin sila ng lupa. That's the end of their story. I will have mercy on whom I will have mercy. The second answer from Paul in the next slide is from the dealings of God about Pharaoh. So we're talking here, brethren, of people who have met together. And please don't forget that si Moses was raised up in the court of Pharaoh being the adopted son of Pharaoh's daughter. So in Romans 9, 17, 18, what the scripture says to the Pharaoh, for this very purpose I have raised you up that I may show my power in you and that my name may be declared in all the earth. Therefore, he has mercy on whom he wills and whom he wills he hides. So, meron ako rito karagdagan. Sa verse 15, sinasabi niya, mercy, compassion, to whom he wills. Ngayon, dito ho, bukod sa sinasabi niyang mercy on whom I will, dinagdag naman ho niya rito, and whom he hardens, he hardens. Now, notice, brethren, as I would like you to uh, Pay attention to the word purpose. Purpose. Or na unit. Sabi yan, for this very purpose. This is about God's plan to fail. Sinasabi mo rito na God is purposeful. God is intentional. He does not do things in random. Hindi mo siya nag-flip ng coin and then kung ano ko yung bumaksak, yun ang kanyang gagawin. Hindi po ganun ang Panginoon Diyos. He does things intentionally because He is in sovereign control of everything and He is perfect in His wisdom. Kaya ho, even sa mga tao, katulad po ni Pero, sinasabi ng Proverbs 16 verse 4. Okay, listen to this very carefully. Proverbs 16 4, and you can look at it sa inyong mga Bible. Sabi yan, The Lord has made everything for its purpose even the wicked for the day of trouble. Uulitin ko. The Lord has made everything for its purpose, even the wicked for the day of trouble. And this may well apply even to the Pharaoh. For well, the scripture says to, to the Pharaoh, for this very purpose, I have raised the up. So again, this is a quotation from Exodus. And in Exodus 9.16, sinasabi ko yan na Paul was actually going back doon sa passage na yun. Yung po ay, yung Exodus 9 po, for our information, ay nasa kalagitnaan po ng mga plake. Tama ba yung Tagalog ko dito? Flakes. Hindi yata plake. Plaki pala yung plaque of appreciation pa rin. Ba't niya naman bibigyan ng plaque of appreciation si si Pierre? Ito ho yung mga peste. So, sa kalagitnaan ho ng mga peste na binigay ng Diyos dahil po sa kasamaan ni Pero, ayaw ho niyang palayain at patuloy kahit na nasa gitna na. Talaga nagkakaloko-loko na yung kanilang bansa. Marami nang namamatay. Maraming nasisira agriculturally, etc. Wala na silang masyadong makain. Pero ayaw pa rin niyang palayain ang mga Israelites. Kahit na nang galing na mismo sa Diyos yung utos. So ano ang sabi rito ng Panginoon kay Moses? Rise up early in the morning and present yourself before Pharaoh and say to him, 
Thus says the Lord, the God of the Hebrews, Let my people go, that they may worship me. For this time I will send all my plagues on you, yourself, and all your servants and your people, so that you may know that there is none like me in all the earth. For by now, so maganda sa yan, for by now I could have put out my hand and struck you and your people with pestilence, and you would have been cut off from the earth. But for this purpose, I have raised you up to show you my power, so that my name may be proclaimed in all the earth. Pansinin mo natin dito. Pagkatapos ulit itong warning na ito kay Pero, na kung saan ang next na darating na judgment ay yung judgment of hell na kung saan mamamatay lahat ng kanyang mga animals. Sinasabi ho rito na si Pero ay ano po, hindi pa rin po siya nakinig. Hindi pa rin po siya nakinig. Tumigas pa rin o lalo pang tumigas ang kanyang puso. Hindi ba siya binigyan ng Panginoon Diyos na sapat na panahon para magsisi? Ang sagot po riyan ay doon sa binasa natin na kung saan sinasabi riyan, For by now, I could have put out my hand and struck you and your people. So parang sinasabi ng Diyos sa kanya, binigyan ka, kung, kung pwede nga lang, kahit ngayon mismo, you will drop dead in my presence. Pero hindi pa ginawa ng Diyos. Mga warnings ang binigay ng Diyos sa kanila. So it is important in the next slide to recognize that God is never said to harden anybody who did not first harden himself. Pagka binabasa ko ito ng mga Kristiyan na sinasabi nila, ay eh, kasalanan pa na ng Diyos kasi pinatigas niya yung puso ni Pero na mahalagang maunawaan po natin na bagamat binabanggit po sa account ng Exodus na ayan po, si Pero patuloy niya ang pinapatigas ang kanyang puso nandiyan po, Exodus 7, 13, 14, 22 22 Exodus 8, 15, 19, 32 and Exodus 9, 7, 34 and 35 pero mahalagang maunawaan po and this, way, this commentary would help us In the next slide, sabi ni Leon Morris sa kanyang commentary sa IBP uh, Romans commentary God's hardening follows on what Pharaoh himself did His hardening always presupposes sin and is always part of the punishment of sin God could kill the sinner immediately when he sinned but he usually does not but he shuts him up to the effect of his sin so that the person who hardens himself is condemned to live as a hardened person. Pwede mo bang sisihin ang Diyos? Hindi mo. Yung mga taong hardened yung kanilang conscience, yung kanilang kasalanan, pwede mo bang sisihin ang Diyos dahil ganun si Pero? Hindi mo. Because Pero just like the rest of us was born a sinner in fact in his mother's womb borrowing the words of David in Psalm 32 I was conceived in sin in my mother's womb all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God so God can never be the author of sin sin entered the world through one man It did not enter through God. It entered through one man, Adam. And the one who tempted him to sin, Adam natin kasi nungyo, si Satan. So God can never be accused of being the author of sin. And yet He can use that evil brethren for His holy purposes. That His name might be glorified. Kaya ho, ang nangyari dyan ay si Pero ho ay makasalanan na. Wala siyang pinakaiba sa mga Israelites. Makasalanan din po sila. 
nagpakita lang ang Diyos ng ano, ng awa sa kanila. Yung mga Egyptians, binigyan ng pagkakataon. Dahil hindi sila matuwas ang pakiusapan eh. ba? Diba? So sabi ng Diyos, sige, gam- uh, ano, if, uh, if they cannot be uh, moved by you know, a simple request, gumamit tayo ng ano, gumamit tayo ng matinding parusa sa kanila. But in spite of that, ganun pa rin sa pangunguna ko ni Pedro. And when God extends mercy and people continue in their sin, the judgment for continually rejecting the mercy of God is that God will give them over to degrading passions and to a reprobate mind. As we have studied in Romans chapter 1, three times nakita ko natin doon. So is God unjust? Is God rendered unrighteous? Kung ang tao pinanganak na walang kasalanan at pagkatapos ang ginawa ng Diyos ay naglagay siya ng kasalanan sa tao at pinatigas niya ang puso ng tao, then I myself, brethren, would accuse God of being what? Of being unholy and unrighteous. Pero wala akong ganun sa Diyos. In fact, God wants Adam and Eve to remain perfect and holy and immaculate sa kanilang relasyon sa Diyos. But they choose the other path. So if you are looking for fairness, you're barking on the wrong tree. What you need from God is not fairness but mercy. Because if you want fairness, brethren, then kita-kita-kita-kita-kita kita tayo sa impyerno. And I'm not joking, brethren. Kung ang hinahanap natin ay patas na treatment sa Diyos, magkita-kita mo tayo sa impyerno. Dahil yun ho yung fairness na karapat dapat po sa ating lahat. Dahil tayo yung makasalanan. We are not looking for fairness, brethren. We are looking for mercy. We are looking for mercy, brethren, because none of us deserve God's favor and God's spiritual blessing and salvation dahil lahat po tayo makasalanan, lahat po tayo indahe sa God. And we have seen that in Romans chapter 3. No one is good, no one seeks. No one is righteous. All have fallen astray. All of us are like sheep na lumayo sa ating pastor. That's very clear in Romans chapter 3. At nung sinabi ni Pablo yun, sinabi niya sa Romans 3, 23, for all, for all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. Wala ko. Wala akong sinin man ang pwedeng magsabi na, well, the glory of God was within my reach, na istambul lang ako, kaya hindi ko nakakawakan. No. All of us have fallen short way, way much short of the glory of God. So you are demanding fairness, brethren? Well, be careful what you wish for. Because everyone who demands fairness, brethren, probably their hearts are already hardened or they do not really understand kung ano ang kanilang hinihiling sa Panginoon. Because fairness, when God gives that to everyone, and if He will not show any of His mercy, then hell will be filled with all the population of every human being who were born on this planet. At wala akong pupunta sa langit kahit isa. So God's mercy is what we really need and with that He is glorified. Ano ho ang conclusion ni Paul sa kanyang argument? Now this is not the conclusion of our preaching this is just the conclusion of Paul sa kanyang argument. We will have our conclusion maya-maya po ng kaunti. Sabi niya ng verse 18, So then, He has mercy on whomever He wills, and He hardens whomever He wills. Yan ho ang conclusion ni Paul. 
Now, let me just quote yung sinabi yung ng isang theologian in the next slide. Si F. F. Bruce. If God does not reveal the principle on which He makes His choice, that is no reason why His justice should be called into question. He is merciful and compassionate because such is His will. Yung po yun. Kaya ho, ina-extend ho niya yung kanyang mercy sa mga kanyang pinili before the foundation of the world. Patas ho ba yun? As far as God is concerned? Yes. So are we still demanding fairness from God? No. Hindi na ho. Because that would do us for all eternity if we're just looking for fairness. God is just to choose whom He will choose and harden whom He wants to harden. Because in the first place, everyone is sinful. And left to ourselves, brethren, sin will continue to somehow taken, kakapal ng kakapal ko, yung kanyo ng kasalanan ko sa isang tao. Hindi ba nalaman ko ang Diyos ay maawa sa kanyo. That's the only hope. So with this, may dalawang doktrina ko ang tinuturo dito ni Pablo. And this might not sit well with many people, and even with some pastors, but I stick with this. In the next slide, we see here two doctrines. First is the doctrine of election. He has mercy on whom he desires. So we saw in Ephesians chapter 2, uh, I think I quoted that several months ago, na by His mercy, He saved us. So dahil po sa Kanyang awa, the doctrine of election. And when we uh, talk about the doctrine of election that we just read uh, from this uh, study Bible, sabi yan, to elect means to select or choose. So according to the Bible, before creation, before creation, God selected from the human race those whom He would redeem, justify, sanctify, and glorify in Jesus Christ. That's the doctrine of election. And secondly, the doctrine of reprobation. He hardens whom He desires. Hindi mo pwede tayo magtakit ng mata at sabihin natin na ang nabasa ko lang sa Bible, God chose Jacob. Hindi ho eh. Buksan mo ang mata mo dahil nakalagay din doon and he hated Esau. He hated Esau. He rejected him. He passed over him. Again, not because Jacob was better than his brother. Again, this is according to man's exertion or man's effort or man's will. It is by the sovereign choice of God. And when God does something, He does not regret it. He is always pleased. God does whatever He pleases. Sabi ng buhok sa So with these two doctrines, next slide, we see that God is free in dispensing His sovereign mercy as He desires. And God is free to leave others in their own sin and hardening them in the sin that they have chosen. Ito ay pinatunayan po ni Pablo sa kanyang sulat sa Romans 1.24 26-28 sa mga salitang God gave them over. God removed His restraining hand of power that these people might just do what they wish to do and continue yung kanila kong Pagsag, pagsaglak, pagbaksak sa kasalanan. God gave them over. Kaya nga, alam mo kung kristyano ka. Because more and more as the days go by, we become more and more like Christ. The fruit of the Holy Spirit is growing sa buhay. Your appetite for God becomes more and more in the Word of God, in prayer, in communion, in fellowship with the believers, 
it is progressing but if it is in the other direction kung kabalik ka rin to well I think it's about time to make some serious inventory and ask yourself honestly am I really a believer or do I see a thickening of my conscience a hardening of my heart and a progressive rejecting of the truth that I hear and I read in the Bible wala akong mawawala sa inyo if you will always examine your faith mas makapatulong pa nga yan eh. sabi nga ni Peter make sure of your calling and your election sabi ni Peter sa 2 Peter chapter 1 and we can only do that by examining ourselves in the light of what the scriptures tell us kung ano ang ano kung ano ho ang gospel at kung ano ang bunga ng ebanghelyo sa buhay ng isang Christian if you honestly feel na parang wala yatang bunga sa buhay ko yung sinasabi ng Bible then it's about time na i-assess mo ang sarili mo baka you are the soil on the wayside baka you are the soil with many rocks you might be a thorny soil and you are not a good soil because a good soil sabi ng Bible will reproduce or will produce fruit 30 fold 70 fold 100 fold then you walk out you know you are connected in the vine because you bear much fruit for Jesus Christ and therefore you glorify God now as I conclude the teaching in the last slide church we have now heard Paul's defense of God the big question for us here is this do we agree with Paul here that God is not unfair or do we still fight against him well it is hard for many to swallow this text especially if we place humanity or ourselves at the center of all things which means the way to embracing the truths of Romans 9 is to see God and His glory as seen as the central highest value in and over all things Church, please don't fight this If you fight this what you're protecting yourselves from the very things that would do you the most good magmuharangan yung mga bagay na mismo makapagbibigay sa inyo ng pinaka mataas na kabutihan only a God the sovereign and the strong can overcome and save hearts dead and entrenched in sin God is not merciful to all but He is merciful to all who look to Christ let's pray Father We ask the wisdom from the Holy Spirit.